Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I'm thrilled to have back on again Win of Winchester 7 and the Runners. The band has another beautiful record on their hands. It's called The Waking Giant, and I'm super excited to talk to them all about it. I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do this. How are you? What's going on? I'm pretty good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. We're excited too. Yeah, man. Always a pleasure. It's been a little bit since we last talked, but uh, the music has been pumping out and it's been fantastic. Well, thank you. We worked pretty hard on this one. So, um, uh, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Took final a little product, longer, a lot yeah. more going in. Hey, listen, there is nothing bad with, you know, uh, taking your time to put out a record. I'd rather you take your time for the quality to be there instead of rushing through it. So I completely yeah. understand. Um, got a bunch of things I want to talk to you about. First That's thing cool. is, though, is um, I think on anyone's first listen of this record, they're going to find that it's bright. It's vibrant. It's upbeat. Instrumentally, it's just like, it's such a beautiful thing. But who is in charge of actually writing the lyrics for this? Well, thanks. I I, I think I like to believe that I am. <laughs> you like to believe? <laughs> yeah, you know, I usually come in with the rough anyway. And then at some okay. point as like we workshop it, you know, they'll make some suggestions and there's a turn of phrase or, you know, something doesn't quite work out. And then sometimes during the recording process, you know, something seems like it's going to be perfect, but as you start to deliver, yeah, there's some changes that happen kind of in flight. And that's always nice. kind of exciting because you just go, oh, that's a good one. We'll keep that. <laughs> nice. Well, okay. In that case, then what are these stories about? Like, are they direct things that happen in your life or they're just, you know, no. off the cuff remarks? So the last album had a bit of a you know concept album thing to it. We were like, we're gonna try to make a theme for a cozy mystery. Right. You know, it'll be a murder mystery, some conspiracy, and won't that be fun? And after we got done, we were just like, man, that's terrible. Because after you get you know, after you're done making it, you keep having to think of other stories about the same topic. So by the time True. you get to the end of the record, you're like, I'm sick of the story. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, what else do I tell? So we started in on talking about what to do with this one, and it, it just seemed that everything that we read and everything that we were going to had uh, something to do with AI. And uh, there was a story that Jack had written a while ago um, when he thought maybe he'd take a turn at being an author, which don't tell him, but it wasn't very good. But the idea was, promise. <laughs> <laughs> the idea was pretty good. He just had this idea of what if people were in a VR world for so long and they kind of forgot they were there. Yeah. So the way things happen is the way things happen. And I always thought that was an interesting idea. So then one night it struck me that perhaps if you took that and a little bit of the AI and tied it together, wouldn't that be cool? And how might that work? And that gave uh, birth to the concept that became another concept album. Yeah. But this one would turn out easier to write because it was a little bit more rich of a story. It wasn't just who killed who, who framed who. Yeah. It was a little bit more tangible in how we as a society are reacting to uh, new technology revolutions like AI. And yeah. in this case, uh, we had this idea of there will be this AI world. And, you know, the guy who's going to fund it is going to also have other investments and of course one of them has something to do with ai so it wouldn't be cheaper than hiring a bunch of administrators to run the thing if we just had the ai do it we'll tell it what's good and what we want to have happen and sure. they're just going to be the admin of the place and everybody will go in and they'll get to enjoy themselves and in this way the investor thought we'll market it to the uh doom preppers and the retiree yeah. And the people that want to just be in VR and won't that be cool because they can all find what they're looking for. They can all be a virtual like um, kind of self that they aren't really, but they'd like to be. And if they want to change how they look, they can do that. So at any one point, you're young, vibrant, and beautiful. And you want to change something, go ahead. You just pay some credits and mess around with that and you feel yeah. no pain while the body stays in some kind of a uh, secure life support sort of thing. And, um, you know, what a great way to go. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that that's kind of a concept in its own, but it's a lot more open-ended because I feel it's, it's also uncharted territory. We're such at the beginning of this whole AI thing and chat GPT and just 
kind of figuring out what to do with it and the capabilities you writing yeah. about it is you know commentary on the whole subject and the fact yeah, that that's where actually, we wanted you to put, put it, it to yeah. use which is insane to me like it's... you know sometimes because it's tough because in my opinion and i uh -huh. might have said this last time so many people they just they don't care what you're saying. They listen to music for the way that it makes them feel as opposed yeah. to like, oh, I want to hear this love story or this breakup story or whatever it is. Yeah, They don't care because they don't know you on a personal level. So what difference does it make if you have, you know, a computer write these lyrics? Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, I know there's a channel out there um, uh, like uh, Rick Beato and mm -hmm. uh, he goes ahead and talks about, you know, the Rihanna's last album. And, you know, it, it's a hit. She's talented, but the lyrics are crap. Yeah. <laughs> so, because no, one, cause no one cares. Nobody no cares, cares because it's such so damn catchy. Yeah. But, um, you know, I just kind of grew up and cut our teeth on things where the lyrics mattered. So, yeah. You know, it didn't necessarily matter that you knew everyone. Sometimes we mangled them and that was just fine. Right. But, uh, you know, when you read the lyrics on the liner page or you read the lyrics on someplace else, you know, it was nice to imagine what they meant. And <laughs> of course. one of my favorite things to do is always, um, you know, we have a good rooting and appreciation for the Beatles. So for yeah. me, that idea of you know, being able to have uh, things that could mean more than one thing is something I always try to put into the lyrics. No, that's, hey, that's completely reasonable. Um and yeah, it's like you said on the Rihanna thing. No one cares. It barely matters. People who listen to this, 99% of them don't know who you are or even what you look like. And it's right. just like, for me, I mean, listen, I'm a lyrics person and I've got a whole massive vinyl collection where I do the same with the liner notes, but it's a different time and it's a different era. So it if you're is. not, yeah. So we just kind of were like, you know, on the last one, we felt like it, it, it worked, but it was a little narrative heavy. Sure. So on this one, we were like, okay, well, maybe make it a little bit more of a personal experience. So rather than worrying about characters and plot, we'll just go how people are reacting to this thing. And there's a little bit of narrative here and there. We got the guy who's the investor sure. and how he's going to pitch. And we've got the, how the developer is reacting to it. And we even have the AI itself, like, you know, going ahead and trying to sell itself about yeah. how you should just go ahead and disassociate with me <laughs> right um, but <laughs> no, man, i along... love that so much i really Thanks, do but along the way there's <laughs> haves and have nots so we, we yeah. talked about that a lot and totally. that i think was very relatable <laughs> um so your last record was heart of the golden mystics and again concept record for uh anyone that hasn't listened to it and i recommend listening to it but this one does feel not drastically different on the instrumental and it's it's still very much got like the soul of the band but at least lyrically and just like in its overall tone, it's different from recording yeah, that into, into, uh, into sort of transferring, you know, creating the blueprints for this one. Is there anything that you learned in the studio or just like general tips that you're like, I want to carry this over to the new record? Oh my gosh. Yeah. We're doing that all the time. Every <laughs> time, you know, every time we set out to do something new, it's always a matter of um, what haven't we tried? And what else yeah. does this thing need? And that experimentation, I think, fuels a lot of what we do. But there are a couple of things, to your point, that on this record um, really did prove different. One of them was it was the first time we ever met our mix engineer in person. It's such a virtual world. Wow. Yeah. All of our stuff had been done just kind of as a band as we operate. We live in different countries from each other. So we record and send stuff back and forth and sure. where we can we get together and do a recording session, but we'd never yeah. done it with our mix engineer because we've always just said, you know, hey, what do you think of this? And send it over to him. So this time we actually went to his studio and decided to record some tracks there. And that just kind of gave it a little life, changed things, a little bit of scenery. And that was a cool experience. So there there was that. And, um, you know, beyond that, you know, the... I think we really focused on a little bit more on the relatable part and um, making some of the some of the tones that we're bringing in you know, maybe uh, we're a little bit more varied. So we're trying different stuff from the experimentation, but maybe more in the sense of well, okay, what might it be like if we, you know, try to you know, make this thing a little bit synthwave? Or yeah, <laughs> on the last song, the AI-driven one, we were like, 
we've never tried looping anything. How does that work? <laughs> so we just started yeah. playing around and going, well, that bit's good. Throw it over there. That sounds like a chorus. <laughs> nice. Well, so you say that, but, you know, obviously the experimentation and the trying new things, but me just like as a non-biased listener, I still feel that the record is cohesive. Like it still very much has like a, you know, a front to back listen quality about it where I'm not saying there aren't standout singles, but at the same time, it flows kind of effort effortlessly from start to finish. And I don't know if that, you know, recording this was like, yeah, this is the type of record that that needs to be. But in my opinion, I think that ended up happening. Thank you. Um, I really want to say it was just genius. <laughs> But Listen, you, know, you can, God, you can, and I'll say, yeah, of, man, totally. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of happy That's accident, right. you know. Sure, I, sure. Um, you know, I like puzzles. I tend to think about writing songs and lyrics kind of like a puzzle. Yeah. Um. So I'm working on trying to figure stuff out. But you hear from a lot of songwriters that there's this little bit of, you know, like tuning in and channeling it from the ether. So there yeah. is always that little bit of magic where you know you're just you've got. For me, I often we'll write uh, the music first and we don't have lyrics. Maybe we have a phrase or something, but we don't have any, yeah. we don't know what the song is. So it's only after having played it a whole bunch of times during tracking that, you know, you'll find yourself brushing your teeth and you're going da, 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 <laughs> disassociation. Right. Totally. <laughs> What's I, that? Mean, listen, I, I think at the same time, because you've listened to the songs, obviously more than anyone else has, deep down subconsciously for everyone's everyone who's recording on it like you're not gonna put out something so sonically different that it's like well let's put out a hip-hop song on this thing like that's not what you're doing i think deep down it kind of comes where like you just start making the music and it happens the way it happens i i think it does then within that time period of when you're focusing on it you're very much yeah. in that moment so there are carryovers from one to the next you might be trying sure. different stylistic elements but you know, there is a little bit of that moment that kind of falls into it. And by yeah. not like being one of those records where we started it and then shelved it and came back 20 years later, right. you know, you're finding that, you know, it is really much a product of those times. I know that when we st first started working with our mix engineer, John, uh, it was the first record after COVID. And we'd, we'd written something called a catacomb songs, which was very much a reaction to, man, we've been locked up for too long. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. when we got to the yeah. cozy mystery one well that was because you know while we were locked up we watched a lot of cozy mysteries it was like we watched parties with the band um and in case everybody doesn't know cozy mysteries it's just mysteries where you know it's going to get solved and isn't that fun and for some reason i just love british ones so we watched a lot of british mysteries <laughs> nice um which jack was partial to anyway so um we did all that but it was really in that point we were like, okay, well, let's get back to basics. Remember when we used to rock? <laughs> we just decided, you know, we're we're gonna make a concept album, but let's let's try to right take ourselves out of all that and do something a little bit fresher. I understand. So that was kind um, of relief. I, I guess that totally makes sense. I, I do have to ask though, so technically the record is nine songs long, but the last two are bonus tracks. So why do you think you added them as bonus tracks as opposed to just like putting them in the proper record? Is there an answer for that? Yeah, right? That's a great question. When we first started releasing stuff, it was always just the tracks that were made up the EP. And then at a certain point, somebody suggested to us, you know, well, why don't you record a cover? And, you know, I was always reluctant to do it because it, it seems to me like cover bands for all the crap they get, have the hardest time of them all. Because if I play my song, you might know how it goes, but if I mix it oh, up, you yeah. go, wow, he's artistic. But if you play the cover and you do it wrong, you miss that little riff that everybody knows they're waiting for, they'll hate Very you true. for that. Yes. So when we were like, we're gonna go do a cover, we're like, well, let's do one where we know it pretty well and see what we can do to make it be something that's a little bit different from what they could have already played. Yeah, And what we found exciting about doing it was that despite our best intentions, it always ended up kind of sounding like us. We were like, <laughs> we pour it all in there. We know it's their stuff. We're just I mean, playing yeah. it. But when we get done, it sounds like it's our song and it's not. So we were like, well, listen, we know we've got to credit the writers. It's not our song. But sure. it also is just kind of 
a bonus you know it's just something we did while we were recording as kind of yeah. as a break in between writing so it became a bonus track and for the next several records that's what we would do the bonus track was always going to be a cover and every so often there'd be a bonus track of somebody else doing a remix we had Stuart Epps of um you know uh Oasis and George Harrison and the fame like did a remix of one of our tracks and we put that as a bonus track and it was nice. just cool to hear the difference yeah. so we did that for a little bit and um then this time something unusual happened um there was a song find me a place and it was the first one we recorded for this we were like well let's try to do a little tongue-in-cheek uh, Rolling Stones country rock nice so we we got as country as we felt like we we could conceivably do for an alt-rock band and um out came find me a place we were like well it's not fun and then we wrote the rest of the album and we were like that thing doesn't work (laughs) so we're like i like the song but i can't put it in that sequence and make it make sense sure so we threw it as a bonus track instead of a remix so that one's actually us now the the other one not dead yet that that was a you know a, a cover and um we were so glad to be able to record that uh, but it it was a uh, you just another one of those covers that we did. It's Lord yeah. here on track. Now listen, that's the answer that I was looking for because I wonder like, well, is it, is it seven? Is it nine? Is it not? But there we go. Um, it's I probably guess sort real of, pretentious, yeah. but I've partial. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The more music, <laughs> the better. Um, in in like a similar vein, a follow up to that is like, so this record is fresh. It just came out last month. Yeah. And, you know, d- did you only have these songs ready to go? Or are there demos that could potentially be on future records? I think we have this kind of weird thing where, like, we will brainstorm up a track, work on a couple riffs, you know, maybe write, you know, a scratch of lyrics here and there, but they end up like fragments. We never get as far as having a track that's, you know, completely made and sitting there. Sure. Uh, because at a certain point, we figure if it's worth it, we're going to finish it up. And um, that comes from like a some interview I saw with Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys somewhere where he was just like, you know, you, when, if you start something, you really have to finish it because otherwise yeah. you lose that moment. And when you come back to it, it's never going to be the same if you sure. even come back to it, which I thought was interesting, you know, particularly with the Beatles now and then. Um, but uh, for our perspective, we we wanted to be able to put the best into it, but we we sit with that track and keep working it until it stops sucking. <laughs> so we'll start with something and we're like, that's all right, but no. And we hey, just keep I, working it until we're like, okay, this one's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the honesty, it's I think as like recording music, you have to be honest with yourself. If no I, one's I speaking so. up, then you have an album of crap and no one wants that. So. Well, that's true. And we're so indie, we can't afford that either. No, it's true. No, it's 100% true. Like, and for me, at least, like, I would prefer a shorter record that is all quality instead of just like, here's a 20 song record with 13 filler songs because I wanted more streams on it. Like, especially for an indie band who you have to make an impression right off the bat. It's like smaller, yeah. better, 100%. Well, particularly like when you're trying to catch on, like there's yeah. not a lot of room for play. No. You know, there's not a lot of artistic indulgence I get to do. So, I you know, it. we, I will indulge ourselves a little. There's some fun stuff sure. that we, that we in- integrate, but you know, there's that yeah. limit of it. We're not going over four and a half minutes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, I got a couple more for you. I want to know, um, is there anything important about this record that I guess you haven't mentioned that, that you think is important for anyone who's about to listen? Well, you know, I I always tend to think that at least rock music works best when you can decide what importance it has to you. You know, we're just trying to get you to dance a little, tap your foot, yeah. you know, something that lets you whistle the tune. That's us doing our job. Now, sure. we're working at some deeper topics. Maybe we add some deeper lyrics here and there. So, yeah, we, it's got some meaning to us when we're doing it. We hope it has some meaning to you. I purposely write with, like, multiple meanings when I'm phrasing yeah. things with the idea that you might interpret your own meaning from different stuff. But there are elements in it that had, you know, different, you know, more gravitas sort of moments for ourselves. Like, yeah. um, I know that uh, 
story let's see no it wasn't uh scared of changing actually was a song that i wrote when i was uh i i always write the music first but in this case i i took a crack at writing lyrics first nice. whenever i do that they almost always sound like limericks but um I was watching uh, a Tom Petty documentary on wildflowers while flying to the nice. recording sessions in Albuquerque. And um, those sessions almost got delayed for a while because you know, my, my wife had had a uh, biopsy and we were waiting for the results. But um, she's, a, she, she's a tough cookie and a positive minded sort. And she's just nice. like, look, you've already booked this thing, go you know don't re nice. don't reschedule this all for this there's nothing nothing yeah. else is going to happen while we're waiting True. so while i was watching wildflowers and um thinking about this up in the air out came some lyrics and i thought you know remember the part of the central tenant to what we're writing is it's got to be relatable and there's got to be an element of truth so scared of changing was entirely inspired from my meaning nice. um from the idea that we had some degree of uncertainty for my wife's health and you know, I you know, I was scared of changing, and yeah, I think everybody is, and that was the relatable part. That's a huge so, change, though, a huge potential change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got into the studio, and I just had the lyrics, and we just kind of played around with them in between sessions. We didn't actually record much while we were there on it, but you know, it started percolating from all of that. And yeah. when it came out, it uh, we actually had it all written, and yeah, I think it's from the mindset where I, I first started writing it, it was like a Leonard Cohen sort of, uh, sort of thing where like, nice. you know, I was, I was kind of gravelly voiced and, you know, like, isn't this a little bit, um, you know, sad, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe but melodic. And, uh, then I was, um, I was thinking about it and I was like, you know, I don't like things without a beat. <laughs> what if, uh, we went a little synth wave with this? Yeah. So we started adding in some keyboard parts and I contracted out a, a female vocalist to add on one of those ambient sort of vocals in the background and it paired nicely with what we were doing. So we just kind of started dropping out some of my vocals and layering them in and doing various overdubs until it became a sort of a different song. And in the end, it ended up, I, I think, a little bit more uplifting than it started. Yeah, I would say so. Nice. Um Listen, the last thing I, I want to know is, is there any, I guess, band specific news that you'd like to share anything on the horizon or coming up? You know, um, we get asked that a lot. I, I think uh, we've been talking a little bit about doing, you know, a little bit of a theater tour, trying to find some places to be able to go to where sure. we get a little bit of a smaller crowd, a little history, and wouldn't that be fun? Um, we've been doing a lot of promotion for the for this album. Uh, I think from one thing or another, uh, perhaps some sense of why it's just me here right now. Um, you know, I've had the thought that maybe I might try to my hand at recording a little bit of a solo album to try to do some yeah. things uh, a little bit different from what we do as the band. Sure. Take a little break with that and then come back with some fresh ideas. Because, you know, I don't think we want to do another concept album. But I said that last time, so who the hell knows? I mean, I get but it. Listen, we'll definitely if you have, back. yeah, if you have ideas <laughs> that don't fit the mold of the band, then just record them yourself. No one's going to stop. I you. just want to try something different. So I, I think that might be something that's on the horizon too. But uh, very cool. Yeah, you know, we haven't talked about it formally, so that's maybe okay. this breaks it to them. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Um, listen, I want to thank you so much for taking the time. I I really do appreciate it. Let me please Thank plug you. the record for you before we wrap up here. So for everyone that missed it, the album is called The Waking Giant. The band is Winchester 7 and the Runners. As always, we'll have the links in our articles that you can listen and share and follow along, maybe even for a potential solo album. We'll see. But uh, really, though, I, I, I appreciate you taking the time. I do. Likewise. Thank you so much. Awesome. It's cool. All right. Thank you so much. Have an amazing rest of your night. We'll talk soon. You too. Thank All you. Right, take care. Bye-bye.